Remember how you thought once upon a time that this relationship you had with this person was so open and they were sharing so much so you could be so vulnerable. What would unfortunately happen is that all of those vulnerabilities, traumas, family issues, even past experiences you felt bad about that you may have shared are all brought back up and used against you. Today, we're going to take on the issue of baiting. And before I begin, I'm always going to ask, please hit the bell and subscribe to this channel because not only will you get notifications each time a new episode in this series comes out, you'll also get notifications about the videos we put out every week as well as any special, other special series and live events we're doing. So let's talk now about baiting. So when we think about baiting, let's Think about someone who is finally understanding the narcissistic story, the narcissistic narrative or relationship that they are stuck in. The person decides to disengage or they don't fall for the love bombing part 10 or don't succumb to the hoovering. And I'll be talking about all these terms in this series. A narcissist is actually on a sort of single-minded struggle to have one thing in a relationship and that's power. They had the power when they love bond you. They have the power when they discard you. They have the power when they manipulate you and they have the power when they gaslight you. It's very much a primary driver in the narcissistic dynamic, the drive for power. So, because we don't like power imbalances, you might watch these videos and try to take the power back and you don't engage and you don't react and you don't explain. And then what happens? Always the narcissist will switch up their tactics and they're going to start poking at you and jabbing at you. They may do something like make fun of a physical quality that you're insecure about. Oh, yikes, that dress got a little bit tight. Or look, your sister picked another loser. Or hmm, how interesting that your boss didn't get your evaluation back yet. Hmm, that may not be very good. They may say these cruel and dismissive and unsupportive things. They may start accusing you of things that aren't even true. They accuse you of cheating or stealing. They're trying to get to you. Just when you set those boundaries down, they try to get to you. And it's a normal human instinct to react when you are provoked, especially when someone's accusing you of something, especially something that you haven't done. But when someone is criticizing you about things that you may be particularly anxious about or may say hurtful things about people you care about. In fact, that's often how a narcissist gets to you. Maybe not even going at you, but going after the people you care about. You may have even learned in trying to manage your narcissist to keep quiet when they insult you, but you can't keep quiet when they start going after the people that you care about. And if you do not understand the narcissistic relationship dynamic, then you may have, and you're, I almost guarantee you will have, a really strongly emotional reaction to them. You may raise your voice. You may cry. You may yell. You may get really agitated. It's going to be very clear that you are upset. You may even look a little bit unhinged. And then... The narcissist steps back with a look of very glib satisfaction and uses this as the perfect entry point to gaslight you. What's the matter with you? You look like you're totally out of control. You're crazy. You must have some kind of mental problems. You need to calm down. You're too sensitive. You know the drill well. They'll say it with this very even voice. Just when you became reactive, 
and you literally will believe them and start to feel like there's something wrong with you. You get so angry at yourself for reacting because you know better. And now, you know what you just did? Sadly, you just delivered them a different kind of narcissistic supply. You left the narcissist feeling superior because now the narcissist is calm as can be while you're all kinds of emotionally frothed up, which Please let me normalize that for you. It's a totally appropriate and normal reaction on your part to someone saying terrible things to you. Normally, we react. But the narcissist, they're almost like they're relieved or they get off in the power on getting the upper hand by being non-emotional, calling you out, and then walking away. This whole sequence is called baiting. Baiting is a very common narcissistic technique that often blindsides people. Baiting involves the narcissist sort of engaging in behavior that's designed to provoke an emotional reaction from you. And it tends to be an escalating process. They will keep pushing the envelope. They will keep pushing the cruelty of the things that they say until they get an adequate rise out of you, until they're satisfied that they rattled you enough. So let me give you an example. Here's what a, <clears throat> let me give you an example. Here's what a baiting sequence can look like. So let's just say you're getting a little bit more wise to your narcissist. So you're doing all the things you're supposed to do. You're limiting your engagement and you're generally becoming more distant. Or let's just say your narcissist discarded you and now your narcissist is trying to suck you back in and trying to hoover you and yeah, you're not even actually that interested this time around. At that point, the narcissist may reach out. You've kind of discarded them or they've discarded you, whatever. They might reach out. If that doesn't work, trying to pull you back in, they might ask you more pointed questions. If that doesn't work, they may start calling you out for being a jerk or start cursing at you or calling you names. Then they may double down and comment on something that makes you anxious, something that they know about you, that they know will set you off. And here's where a narcissist behavior can be so atrocious because nothing is sacred. You've probably shared your vulnerabilities with them and they know them. So they may go after whatever your thing is, your appearance, your family, your children, maybe a, a medical condition you may have. And at this point, they may also start hurling all kinds of accusations at you. And this may even be sort of bizarre stuff from left field. Like they might say something like, oh, so I guess you must be a gold digger and replace me with a rich guy, which is going to be news to you because that's not true. Or they'll say, I get it. I get it. You're just too good for your family. You're ashamed of us and who we are and what we stand for. So you decided to go around town passing rumors about your pitiful family. You're like, huh? So now you're almost blinded by the gaslighting. It's like being in some sort of carnival house of mirrors. You don't know which way to turn. But let's say you still keep your cool in the face of this. Now they may double down again with threats. So how would you feel about me telling your boss what you really think of him? Or something like, should I tell your sister about, should I tell your sister that I know about that STD you told me she got? Or it's a veiled threat. You know what I know. Sure would be a shame to share it with the world. And you know what? Even if you go after me for saying something, the world's already going to know. They are very good at throwing those threats out there and it can be really unsettling. And this is the point when most people break and they succumb and they get back in touch with the narcissist. If you didn't break earlier in this process, right? 
if you were in an intimate relationship with someone, the odds are that you did share confidences with them and you did share them with trusted information and they may actually have some proverbial dirt on you. So you agree to talk to them, even though you had set a boundary and didn't want to talk and didn't want to fall for the baiting, you agree to talk. And you know what? And I can guarantee you, trust me on this one, the narcissist can smell your fear. Once you are back at the table, it tends to be business as usual, invalidation, and basically, once their baiting works, they'll look at you with contempt, with a stance of, how dare you think you could avoid me? Now, at the most extreme, if you really don't crack under any of their baiting, baiting can even result and keep kind of escalating into them doing things like filing frivolous lawsuits against you. And that might then force your hand to take on the cost of a lawyer or going back to court and asking more for more custody and that starting that entire process again or just pushing for investigations. These sorts of things can be costly, they can be time consuming, they can be anxiety provoking. Now, not all baiting goes this deep or this dark. In most cases, when you're in any kind of a narcissistic relationship, baiting often takes the form of simply being provoked or getting provoked by them and giving in to their provocation with a strong emotional reaction. Now, baiting gives any kind of narcissistic, difficult, toxic people a sense of power. You becoming unhinged is a source of power and narcissistic supply for them. Again, it sort of fosters their cold sense of superiority. But keep in mind, that is just so they can feel in control again. Because you got to remember, they're very insecure. So when anyone starts pulling away from the narcissistic person or a very toxic person, they don't like the loss of control that comes from someone else calling the shots and that comes from losing that narcissistic supply that they were accustomed to getting. So the idea that they can get it back through bullying and manipulation and intimidation and all that, that's really a core of baiting to maintain that sense of control. Now, baiting can take lots of forms. There's lots of things that narcissistic difficult people can do. They, they can push your buttons. They can be cruel about sensitive issues. They can say unkind things about important people in your life. They can make bizarre kinds of accusations about your behavior such as, I don't know, infidelity or make bizarre ac accusations about theft. They may make underhand sort of passive aggressive comments or they, they may just do anything that they know that then this is after years of studying you and learning you and getting to know you that they know will upset you. And it raises that sort of paradoxical and interesting point. Narcissists actually don't fully lack empathy and they sure as heck don't lack awareness of other people. They actually really clearly learn and recognize the vulnerabilities of other people. They just exploit them instead of protecting them. It's sort of the opposite of empathy, knowing what someone's vulnerable to and using it to hurt them. A good defense though against baiting is to know that it's coming. It is the dark side of what happens when you do no contact or gray rock, things that are also talked about in this series. Because a narcissist cannot tolerate being ignored, they will bait to draw you out, to get your attention, and then keep ratcheting it up. Knowing that it's coming can make it feel less scary. And also, as you feel they're baiting getting ratcheted up, it is important to get advisors on deck, people on your team who you may or may not need. But this may include things like attorneys or other advisors you can turn to for guidance or punt this whole mess to. Narcissists almost always use chaos to their advantage. 
And under pressure, when you're drawn into that chaos, it's harder to get things organized, like getting advisors on board. So that begs the question, why do narcissists engage in baiting? Well, first of all, they love a fight. They are much better at fighting and at antagonism than the rest of us. It's almost like they're always uncomfortable, so they always want to, mm, they want to punch and fight. They are also triangulators, and they are experts at exploiting chaos for their advantage. Now, once they bait and you go for the bait, they are able to use your anger and the other emotions that you express to their advantage. The narcissist's sort of limited empathy also means that they don't stop to think about how they're hurting you, if they're hurting you. In fact, in some ways, they kind of hope they are because it's going to get the rise out of you. And because they lack what we call self-reflective capacity, they can't stop and think, how is my behavior affecting someone else? They lack awareness of how their baiting is experienced by other people like you. So baiting in some ways is a way of projecting and of externalizing their inner battles and throwing them onto the world at large, especially those closest to them. But when it's all said and done, something I've said before, the narcissist is a petty tyrant and a spoiled child that is angry that someone is getting the best of them. They have to win. Narcissists have to win. And it can be hard to hold on to your commitment to no contact, but it is really important you do so. Whatever it is, no contact or boundaries or whatever. If their baiting works and you do find yourself pulled back in, go back to gray rocking, go back to being the robot and keeping the emotion out of your reactions. They're counting on you becoming all kinds of hysterical. Don't deliver that to them. It is really important that you stay as cool headed as possible. And I know that's really hard when somebody's really getting to you. It's very hard to do that. But once they've stepped away, once they've disappeared, the moment you're alone, cry and yell it out. Just don't let them see it. Don't give them that satisfaction. One question that many have asked me is, do they ever stop baiting? Over time, in most cases, yeah, they do. At some point, they're going to find new sources of narcissistic supply. And frankly, they may just get bored with you. They may, they, they just sort of um, they fling you away like a child toy that they don't want anymore. But that's not always the case. If your situation escalates to the point to threats that are dangerous or actions that are dangerous, please contact law enforcement or other appropriate agencies and also ensure that you speak to some form of legal advisor. Baiting is one of those patterns that in some small percentage of cases can escalate. Now, in most cases, baiting does not happen at that level. Baiting really is a form of poking at you to get a reaction out of you. And if you can remember that if you react in, in an emotional way, you are giving them what they want. And if you remember that, it may help you temper your response and make you say, mm, I don't want to give them what they want. Over time, baiting can and will take a toll on you. So you need to make sure that you have supports in place to take care of you, to talk to, and also learn to take care of yourself. Years of enduring this pattern of baiting can really take a toll on your mental and physical health. And some people will say they often find it hard to even find someone to talk to who understands this pattern. Even some therapists who may not understand baiting and narcissistic relationships may not understand this. And it can really be destabilizing to feel like you're talking to people and they're saying, oh, you're being paranoid. So remember, it's very important. You find those people. You find your people that hear you and believe you and can bear witness to the struggle you're in. I hope that this video clarified this concept of baiting, the narcissists poking at you. It's a terrible cycle and if you've been through it, you know it. If you haven't, I hope it doesn't happen to you, but you need to be aware it may very well happen to you. And whether it's a family relationship, a work relationship, 
or an intimate relationship. Baiting is one of the most nefarious and insidious dynamics of the narcissistic relationship. As difficult as these relationships are, many people feel that they can stay the course of gray rocking, firewalling, not engaging, but when you are poked or baited, it can feel like all bets are off. Many people have said to me, come on, expecting me to stay completely neutral in the face of someone insulting my kids or my family or my work or my traumas. I feel like I'm disrespecting myself if I don't fight back. I get that. Baiting is a gambit that works really well for the narcissist and it pulls you in multiple directions. I know I'm not supposed to respond, but I don't want to be a doormat and then I hate how I feel afterwards when I don't engage. It's very complicated. One thing that can help is to recognize the different kinds of baiting. And listen, I only know what I know. If there's a kind of baiting that you have experienced that I don't talk about here, please let all of us know about it and please drop it in the comments. So let's start with number one. How dare you gray rock or firewall me baiting? Gray rock and firewalling, the non-emotional responding style to a narcissist, is a tool for existing in the relationship if you can't leave it. It involves being neutral, sometimes flat emotionally, and not sharing about yourself. The narcissistic person does not like that. Your calmness means that they aren't getting the satisfaction of a rise out of you. And they want to know that they still have that power. So they bait. And if they bait enough, you will break. And they will get the satisfaction of seeing your emotion, which frankly regulates them. They do not like the idea that someone stops giving them narcissistic supply in any way. And you getting upset, it's a form of narcissistic supply. Number two is the, I want to feel better after my tantrum baiting. Narcissistic people are often quite dysregulated, especially when they do not get their way. But they also know that to be too ragey and screamy is not a good look. Their impulsive rage means that they regularly have unattractive blow-ups. And in more cases than not, they know that those blow-ups make them look bad. Misery loves company, and foolish behavior looks less foolish if someone else is behaving in a dysregulated bad way at the same time. So they want other people to throw tantrums too, right? It makes their tantrum look less bad. So they will bait you after they have one of their meltdowns. Maybe they will blame you, but however they do it, then your visible or ang anger or your visible emotion means that their tantrum, at least in their eyes, wasn't that bad. Number three is the, I am going to use your vulnerabilities against you baiting. Remember how you thought once upon a time that this relationship you had with this person was so open and they were sharing so much so you could be so vulnerable. What would unfortunately happen is that all of those vulnerabilities, traumas, family issues, even past experiences you felt bad about that you may have shared are all brought back up and used against you. For many people, this can foster a sense of self-blame because people will blame themselves for sharing about themselves. And please don't do that to yourself. It's natural to want to have the connection and the intimacy of sharing. And when the narcissist throws the vulnerabilities you shared back at you and you react strongly, you'll be caught in the mess of feeling a mix of emotions of having this past experience thrown at you and managing the emotions that you may express. Number four is the, I am going to make you look bad in front of other people baiting. When you're in a close relationship with a narcissist, they actually do love to make you look bad in front of other people. It allows them to maintain dominance and superiority in front of others while leaving you looking sort of foolish or somehow less, and maybe even leaving people feeling that the narcissist is the unfortunate one if they have to be with someone like you who is just not doing so well, isn't as good as them. 
So the narcissist may say things in front of others that you may feel compelled to defend. You might be horrified that they were shared. And you may either react and get upset in front of those people or react later in private. But if you don't react in real time, for many people, they'll often become quite quiet and other people may perceive that negatively. And then the narcissist still gets to look good. This is a tricky thing though for narcissists to do. They need to be very subtle in how they bait you in front of other people. It may be a tiny little barb that they throw in and try to play it off as a joke that leaves you feeling unsettled, or it may actually be something embarrassing. And if you react badly and strongly, others may look at your reaction oddly or think that you're overreacting. Number five is the, I need to feel better about myself baiting. Now, this is similar to the, I need to feel better after my tantrum baiting, but baiting, as we know, often sets up a whole gaslighting cycle. They bite, they bait, you bite, you react strongly. They keep their voice very calm and talk down to you saying it's like, my, you're getting a little worked up. I think you need to work on that temper of yours. They then look like for a minute, like a very well-regulated, reasonable person. And you feel as though maybe that maybe they're right that you're too sensitive or too emotional, but you're also really upset. Again, it's a dominance move for them. And it's very upsetting for you because you're having a normal reaction to a situation. Number six is the, I need to regulate baiting. Sometimes the narcissistic person is just craving a fight. They need a fight to regulate. Narcissistic brains like quick fixes. Arguments can often give those to them. So you may just be minding your business and it may feel like they are looking for a fight. And no matter how deep you are or gray rocky or firewally, they just keep pushing and pushing and pushing until you snap a bit. And then they can let it rip and fight with you. And that regulates them. And then perhaps they even calm down. Narcissistic people cannot regulate themselves. They need stuff outside of them, drugs, alcohol, sex, spending, or yelling at people. Don't be their drug. If it's possible, get out of the space. Now it's interesting where I have seen this, I need to regulate baiting happen and where it is in inescapable is in the car. And many people will report the narcissist using their, their sort of baiting meltdown in the car where you can't get away. Baiting to me is one of the most toxic dynamics in the narcissistic relationship because it really magnifies the self-doubt, the self-gaslighting, and other dynamics that leave a person blaming themselves, gaslighting themselves, and questioning themselves, which ultimately weakens your resolve. Now, we will be doing more videos on how to cope with being baited. But let's face it, when people go after you and say things about the sacred stuff in your life, your children or your beliefs or things that matter to you, sometimes we just take the bait. We aren't robots. We're human beings and we're going to react. The key is having self-compassion with yourself afterwards and recognizing the different types of baiting so you can understand what is happening and have more tools to cope with it. So let's talk about birthday baiting. Okay, so... It's your birthday. Someone's watching this. It's your birthday. Happy birthday. But it's your birthday. Have you ever had this happen? Your narcissistic family who regularly invalidates you, manipulates you, maybe even criticizes or insults you. They get bent out of shape when you do not respond to the text they send you on your birthday, right? It's your birthday and they get mad at you for not responding. One of the most galling aspects of the narcissistic relationship is that narcissistic people respond when they want to respond. You'll see this trend most often in narcissistic families and narcissistic relationships that are no longer in the devalue, that are no longer in the love bombing stage and are in the devalue discard stage. You just, they'll respond when they get to it. Birthdays are interesting. Birthdays become a way to force contact with you under seemingly legitimate circumstances, right? More than a few people have written in a question or a comment to this, which, to this effect, and they ask, my parent or my sibling or some other narcissistic family member got really angry and called me ungrateful for not responding to their happy birthday text to me. 
This comes on the heels of us having numerous horrible disagreements or me going low contact or disengaging more. There have been multiple years when I reached out to them on holidays or birthdays or whatever, and they responded whenever they felt like responding or not at all. And I had to get to be fine with that. And I wouldn't say anything. But when they reach out to me on my birthday and I didn't respond, the entire family made it about me being cold or ungrateful or manipulative. Or they said they were so worried because they thought something bad happened to me because I didn't respond to their birthday message. Okay. This is birthday baiting. Birthdays are complicated for us as individuals, right? Some people hate them, especially as we get older. Some people ignore them. Some people actually like them and they enjoy the day and allow themselves to have a special day because maybe they're going to have dinner with people they like or just give them, themselves you know, the day off or they enjoy hearing from old friends. Birthdays can be really existential days when we take stock of another year past. And a lot of us are often in a weird headspace on our birthday. So when the narcissistic people with whom we have a complicated relationship, particularly family members, start reaching out on that day, it can feel complicated. Again, it all goes back to that damn birthday obsession thing with the narcissistic people. Now add to that grandiosity. Grandiosity is a funny thing. It often means that if you aren't top shelf supply for them right now, they will only communicate on big ticket days like birthdays. And I know lots of people do that. People even who mean well, who aren't narcissistic, and they'll text you or email or call you on a birthday, something they wouldn't do on another day. However, in an ideal circumstance, these text messages and emails shouldn't create work for the person having the birthday. They should just be able to happily receive them and not have to respond back to them. Well, that doesn't work if the narcissist is the one texting you because they love the grand gesture and they believe that when they've been so wonderful as to remember your birthday, that you have to engage with them or re-engage with them if you've gone quiet with them for a long time. Narcissistic people use birthdays or other significant dates like holidays or anniversary dates as a way to reinitiate contact with somebody. They feel entitled to it. And above all, they feel entitled to a response. Again, this gets tricky with narcissistic families who have one set of rules for themselves and one set of rules for everyone else. In fact, more than a few survivors of family narcissistic abuse have said that they dread birthdays because they know that their narcissistic family will attempt to contact them and it will start a whole brouhaha if they do not respond to those texts, which will then start a whole cascade which sadly can spoil the rest of that person's birthday. The narcissistic person's entitlement, they feel entitled to communication on their terms and contact on their terms when they want, how they want it. And it can be so frustrating because of the hypocrisy and because you can work your ass off for months, setting better boundaries and disengaging and all of that. But then your birthday comes around and the narcissistic folks feel that it's open season on you again and want you to respond to their text, which really is a glorified Hoover. So what do you do? What's the mantra to a narcissistic relationship? Yeah, you can't win. If you do respond to their text, you might find yourself pull down a baited rabbit hole, or even having to endure their anger for not being included in the birthday plans you already made. If you don't respond, then you are the mean and awful and terrible person who isn't even decent enough to let them know that you are okay on your birthday. And really, so you can tell them how nice they are for remembering their birthday, right? If this is happening on social media, you're really in double jeopardy because they will see that you are perhaps responding to other people's well wishes or heaven forbid, showing pictures of yourself having a nice time without them. That's going to start off its own cascade too. So pick your poison. You owe your narcissistic family members nothing. And in fact, I'd argue that the greatest birthday gift you can give to yourself is to maintain those boundaries and keep them strong for another year. 
So I'd love to see in the comments if any of you have ever gone through the birthday bait where your birthday was used as a way to pull you out of low contact or no contact and then having to face the rage because you were the one that didn't say thank you for them saying happy birthday to you. So I was watching Succession last night. <sighs> My God, it's like the altar of narcissism shows, right? It's the best. Every character in the show is narcissistic, which is fun. But it's not so because everyone's narcissistic. Now I'm trying to figure out what kind each one is. In this scene, two of the brothers were going at each other. One is a more malignant, cruel narcissist. The other one more vulnerable and broken. The vulnerable and broken one appears to be trying to be a bit gray rock, giving one word answers and even just going along with the malignant brother. But then the malignant brother just says, come on, fight with me, get mad. It's as though the malignant brother couldn't release the tension until the brother who he kept taunting and insulting and bullying finally broke and showed a little emotion and fight largely because it appeared that the malignant brother wanted to destroy him. So that was one of the best examples I'd ever seen of baiting was uh, well, not seen in succession. So baiting is how they pull you in, how they draw you in into conflict. Narcissistic folks love the fight. They thrive under conditions of antagonism. So when you are trying to gray rock or disengage, they aren't having it. They need you to be messy and chaotic. So not only can they get the satisfaction of the fight, but also so you get so frothed up that they can contemptuously write you off as being unhinged and shame your feelings. Calm down. You are too sensitive. You are out of control. The challenge is that if you don't take the bait, they escalate and escalate to the point that they are saying such cruel and awful things that you have to weigh out what is worse, getting into the fight with them or standing there while, while a person says awful things to you and not take the bait. I'm not sure what the answer is. And that's what baiting is. It's what makes these narcissistic relationships feel impossible. Because just when you think you have gray rocking and not going deep wired, they bait and bait and bait. And you may react and then you feel remorse after not reacting for so long. Be kind to yourself. It's only human to react and take the bait. And that's what the whole setup is. So that's what baiting is. The bigger question is, what isn't baiting? Number one, it isn't just a person asking a question or making a simple request, maybe that you don't want to do. So if a person asks a question, is your sister coming? Do we have to pick them up from the airport? Or can you not post that picture? Those kinds of things. The simple request, it's a question, is your sister coming? Do we have to pick that person up at the airport? That's a question. That's a request. Now, the, request, the question or the request may not be something you want to talk about. Like, you know, for example, they don't like your sister. But if it fits into the conversation, it may not be baiting. Number two, baiting is not having a different opinion from you. If they say, I like such and such candidate in the election and tell you why, and with a normal non-taunting tone of voice and without disparaging your preference, that's not baiting. Now, if you tell them specifically, I don't want anyone to talk about politics at my birthday party, and they bring up the candidate conversation, that may be baiting. But even beyond politics, if they say, I don't like this restaurant, or I don't think that's a mechanically good car, then that may not be baiting. If, however, this is bringing up a long running conflict, perhaps about a certain restaurant, and then they drop the restaurant bomb, then that may be more in line with baiting. You can see it's a little bit hazy. But just a normal difference of opinion that's shared in an appropriate manner, not baiting. Number three, a person is just living their lives. Maybe a friend goes to a birthday party or of, of a person you don't like. So your friend's going to a birthday party of a person that you don't like. Or they plan a trip that coincides with your birthday because that's when their vacation time fell. Or a person goes to the grocery store without consulting you first. 
that's probably not baiting. You may be hurt or frustrated that they remain friends with that other person who might have been hurtful to you or that they may miss your birthday dinner, which they didn't know about because they got their vacation time a while ago, or that they don't bring home the eggs you wanted. But if they're not doing that, not, if they're not doing them and not in response to something you did, that's not baiting, even if you don't like what they are doing. Number four, a person giving solicited feedback is not baiting. If you ask someone, do you like this? Or can you let me know if this is a good idea? Or what are your thoughts about this? And they answer you honestly and constructively, it may not be baiting. Now, if they are forwarding their own agenda and not being honest about it, like, are you sure you are ready for that job? it means more time spent traveling and they don't want you to travel, then that may be baiting because they may want to draw you into a conflict and they aren't being transparent about their criticism or their undermining. Now, if they came out straight and say, ugh, that actually seems like a great job, but the travel concerns me, then that is not baiting because they are giving you feedback and being transparent about their concerns. So it's again about that transparency piece. A lot of the things that are not baiting are a little bit hazy because they can become baiting depending on the context. If their behavior or words are reactive or inappropriate to the situation, then that question or that opinion or that feedback may qualify as baiting. If it feels like it pings on a standing conflict while the words themselves may feel neutral, it may be baiting. Baiting can take so many forms, behavior, sins of omission, taunts, jabs, mockery, jokes at your expense, insults or criticism of things that, or people that matter to you, passive aggressive sulking. As a result, there are lots of things it is. Ultimately, baiting is a dominance move for them. Sometimes it's a victimhood move. And ultimately, though, as a dominance move, people who are narcissistic are always seeking dominance. However, what can happen is that the baiting is such a regular fixture of these relationships that when someone comes along and engages in behavior that may not feel good, we may be tempted to call it baiting. Always remember the goal of baiting is to draw you into a conflict a defensive posture, or a reaction. If that is not what is driving a person's behavior, then it's not baiting. Unfortunately, however, you're not always privy, in fact, you're typically not privy to other people's motivations. Baiting sucks because it is meanness and gaslighting all wrapped into one but it definitely allows the narcissistic person and others to maintain the narrative that you, as the other person in the relationship, may be the one who is the one who is emotionally reactive and dysregulated simply because you are reacting to them. When enough baiting occurs, more than a few people feel that the only path forward is disengagement and even no contact. And that can be a painful recognition. Keep in mind too, a sentence that may be completely neutral can be turned into a bait sentence simply by tone of voice. Are you, are you, go, are you going to the store? Ugh, you're going to, are you going to the store? So you can see that just that, are you going to the store? can be, are you going to the store? Question, or are you going to the store? contempt. So in that understanding how tone can even take those points I made and transform something into baiting, something I'm aware of. And because it's so hazy, a lot of people aren't always so sure. But I will tell you this, if you feel like you need to defend and get in there, most likely it's baiting. Hope that clears it up. Thanks again.